Now let us discuss about the central nervous system CNS. It includes two major organs of the nervous system. They are the brain and spinal cord. First, let us look at the structure and functioning of the brain. So the human brain is the biggest when compared to the proportion of the body. In all the animals, the human brain is biggest when compared to its body, body size. So other animals may have much bigger brain, but compared to the proportion of the body, if you compare that human brain and human body proportion, the brain is the largest. It is that uh, humans, we have the largest brain when compared with our body proportion. So the brain is the main center of various activities and abilities of humans. So it controls the various body parts and coordinates. And at the same time, the brain, it has got some additional things which are not found in other animals like intelligence, analysis and various kind of logical abilities all are because of the brain. So brain is a very soft and delicate organ. It is protected by a bony case called as cranium. We call it as skull. So brain is protected by a bony case called as cranium. Again, the brain is covered by three layers of membranes called as meninges. So these meninges are covering the brain, giving protection to the brain. And these meninges, in between the layers of the meninges, there is a fluid called as cerebrospinal fluid. which protects the brain from shocks and jerks. So the meninges that are found on the brain, they are not ended up with the brain. They are extended to the spinal cord. Spinal cord is a continuation to the brain. So these meninges are extended from the brain to the spinal cord and their layers, the gap between the layers of the meninges is filled by the cerebrospinal fluid. And this cerebrospinal fluid, it gives nourishment, it gives protection, to the brain and spinal cord from shocks and injuries. So the brain is protected by meninges and cranium as well. Spinal cord is also protected by a bony case called vertebral column. The vertebral column, it protects the spinal cord. If you look at the internal structure of the brain, inside the brain, you find two different zones, gray matter, white matter. The peripheral or the outer areas of the brain, gray matter you find gray matter. What is this gray matter? The cell bodies. You know that nerves are present in the brain, nerve cells. Every nerve cell has got a cell body and axon. All the cell bodies are radiated towards the outer side. And these cell bodies, they are associated with capillaries. They form the gray matter. Whereas axons, they are covered by myelin sheath and which are white in color, they are towards the center. So towards the center it is white, white matter. So white matter is towards the center, gray matter is towards the peripheral in case of brain. So the white matter is made up of axons. So these axons, they form at the center and lower end of the brain, they form a tough fiber joint, jointed fibers. It forms a cord, cord of so many axons, cord. It is called a spinal cord. It extends into the vertebral column. So these myelinated axons, they form the spinal cord and continues down into the body. So that the importance of the brain, the function, the role of the brain, it was identified by the Greek physiologists 2000 years back. They learned that 2000 years back, they learned that the brain is the control a unit or a control system of the body. But they were not known about the nerves and the connections of the nerves and reflex actions, how the information is passed. So that was not known, but they know that the brain is the control center. So the brain has got different zones which have uh, an important role to play in our body. The brain is divided into three major zones called a forebrain, midbrain and hindbrain. So forebrain, if you see that it consists of cerebrum and diencephalon. These two are the parts of forebrain. Cerebrum, diencephalon are the two parts of the forebrain. 
and midbrain it includes the optic lobes optic lobes that means our sight the eyes are connected to brain at optic lobe area so optic lobes that are associated with visual and uh, hind brain cerebral cerebrum sorry cerebellum and medulla oblongata these two consist of hind brain cerebellum and medulla oblongata the last part of the brain called as hind brain now let us look at that the cerebrum and diencephalon their functions so first look at that the cerebrum it is the seat of intelligence our intelligence lies here so our memory logical thinking analysis perception speech and uh, emotions these are all under the control of the cerebrum and sensations so responding to the external temperature heat or cold or pressure so producing responses to that also under the control of this first part cerebrum so the next one diencephalon so diencephalon is a relay center relay center for the signals that are associated relay center for the responses that are associated with the pain temperature and light so that is a relay center and the diencephalon acts as a reflex center for certain muscular activities and this is also responsible for the control of emotions like anger so this is the site of emotions called as anger and the diencephalon has got as a hypothalamus this hypothalamus controls the pituitary gland pituitary gland is the master gland which controls all the other glands of our body so pituitary is the master gland which control other other glands and that pituitary is under the control of hypothalamus hypothalamus this hypothalamus is in the region of diencephalon the diencephalon it also controls or regulates the important things in our body that is water balance in our body water balance blood pressure blood pressure in our body and body temperature body temperature and our hunger our hunger and sleep so if these things are disturbed there the total body systems will disturb so these are under the control of this uh, diencephalon so these are the various activities that are controlled by this region diencephalon and memory our mental abilities logical thinking perception speech emotions they are under the control of the cerebellum this is the seat of intelligence and memory cerebrum so cerebrum and diencephalon these two constitute the first part of the brain four brain it is the major part of the brain which uh, takes up all these activities now let us look at the other parts now let us look at the second part mid brain mid brain is a relay station so where the impulses are um, exchanged between the brain and spinal cord so the mid brain from the cerebral cortex the motor reflexes whatever the motor responses or motor signals are there so the motor signals are to be carried from the cerebral cortex cerebral cortex to spinal cord and from the spinal cord they are brought to the thalamus region so it helps in the relay of impulses from cerebral cortex of the brain to spinal cord and sensory impulses from spinal cord to thalamus so it is a relay station through which the impulses are exchanged between the brain and spinal cord that is the role played by the midbrain so the other part of the brain is that cerebellum so cerebellum is the part which controls the posture of our body the posture and the equilibrium of our body the maintenance of equilibrium and muscle tone posture equilibrium 
and muscle tone of our body are maintained by this cerebellum and functioning of the voluntary muscles the reflexes of the voluntary muscles the functioning of the voluntary muscles the control of the voluntary muscles is under the cerebellum so this is the function performed by the cerebellum so the last part medulla oblongata so this medulla oblongata it controls the involuntary functions like cardiac function beating of heart respiratory function the inhalation and exhalation and vasomotor the constriction and relaxation of the blood vessels changing the diameter of the blood vessels is the vasomotor activities respiratory activities and cardiac activities are under the control of medulla oblongata certain reflexes like coughing sneezing swallowing these are under the control of medulla oblongata swallowing coughing and sneezing these are the under the control of medulla oblongata medulla oblongata so these are the different parts of the brain which control various activities which are very important for the survival of the organism so various body parts and various body functions are controlled and coordinated by the different parts of the human brain so the second important part of the central nervous system one is brain and the second one is spinal cord spinal cord it extends in the vertebral column it is continuation of the brain so it extends into the vertebral column if this is the brain so the brain is continued as a spinal cord it is a tough cord of nerve fibers it is a tough cord of neurons that is extended into the vertebral column the major difference we observe between the spinal cord and brain in brain the gray matter is towards the peripheral side and white matter is at the center but in the spinal cord the outer side white matter is there and at the center the gray matter is found the outer areas form the white matter part of that nerve cells so this is the major difference in the earlier times people believed that during that a greek psycho uh, uh, during the time of greek physiologists 2000 years back they believed that brain was the only control center so they thought there was no role of spinal cord in controlling the uh, activities in producing in taking decisions or processing the information just they thought that it is a junction of the nerves which are passing to various body parts from the brain but they thought there is no role of the spinal cord but later two people leonardo da vinci leonardo da vinci and stephen hales so these two people they conducted several experiments in their experiments they removed the brain of the frog and they observed that the muscles of the frog are moving when they create some kind of reflex action so it shows that the spinal cord is giving the reflex action the brain is removed so earlier it was thought that for every action brain is the responsible part but even after removing the brain of a frog the muscles of the frog could produce the reflex action jerks if they are pricked it used to give the jerk move the muscle the movement in the muscle is brought without the brain so then they concluded that the spinal cord is responsible for producing reflex actions in certain parts of the body so the spinal cord the role of the spinal cord it was revealed by the experiments of those two people leonardo da vinci and stephen hales so in their experiment they also proved that they have uh, pierced a needle into the spinal cord of that frog once the spinal cord the needle is pierced into the spinal cord then the frog died so it shows that the frog it is alive and able to produce the movements because of the spinal cord so it was proved that the spinal cord has got a good functional role in producing the reflex actions in creating certain responses so there is a role of spinal cord also along with the brain that was proved by this uh, two people